Hey folks, we are back with a new episode of Three Minute Anime. Huzzah! Hooray! It's like the second one this year. I know, it's amazing. This is Peter Bowman, and as always, I'm joined by my good friend and co-hosts, Eric Carlson and Gav Leaf. How are you guys doing tonight? I exist. <laughs> I barely do. Um, it's touch and go. Ah. I'll, I'll let you know tomorrow. Oh, is your causality getting all wonky again? That's what happens when you do too much time travel. Well, it's like I get on the train to work in the morning, and it's like a 50-50 shot if I end up in uh, at work or like in fucking Narnia. Right, right. Uh, well, yeah, that that is the issue with being in the UK, you know. Our train service is fucking horrendous. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Go I... find the big lion and punch him till he lets you back into your own reality. Well, no, that's the thing. I, I prefer it in Narnia. I don't have to go to work. Oh, he's probably kicking you out then. Yeah. Damn you, Jesus allegory lion. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, wait, what are you doing here? <laughs> are, are, you're, not, you're not some teenager who I can do, who I can coerce into becoming becoming a monarch. There's a monarch involved? Cool, I'll do that. No no coercion uh, either. It's more trouble than you're worth, but you want to be as a warlord or, ra or um, barbarian raider. Hmm. Trust me, there's a lot more paperwork than you think of being a medieval uh, monarch. <laughs> uh, it's good to be back <laughs> <laughs> at any rate so we are uh, covering in my most recent series selection uh, Spice and Wolf Spicy Wolf yay <laughs> there's actually apparently a website called spicy wolf spicy hyphen wolf dot com yes I've actually not bothered to go check you know what you're gonna do it now <laughs> I'm gonna do it now watch out for the horse cannon Pony cannon. I forgot the pony cannon. There's a pony cannon? Yeah. That fires ponies? Yeah. We need more they of advertised those. It, they advertised it at the start of every episode, like a, you know, one, like one of those. Yeah, um, it TV. still exists. Really? It's a Japanese website. Well, Dedicated I mean, to Spice and Wolf. I mean, this right. is only, what, 2009, so it's only a 10 year old website at this point. Yeah. Oh, you can tell. Uh, <laughs> uh, and the mo the anime, well, yeah, 2009. Uh, no, that was the that was the uh, VN. No, the the anime was also 2009. Yep. Uh, so yeah, we uh, Spice Wolf. The anime is based on a light novel series. Uh, and uh, which is apparently still technically running. Seriously? According to Wikipedia, it's, it's running ran from February 10, 2006 to present. There are 21 volumes. Jesus. They're never getting to wherever part of the North she... It's, it's got to be like fucking like Alaska that she's from. <laughs> Either that or they did and they, she's decided to keep traveling with him. Yeah, the, well, yeah, okay. It looks like she's still writing the light novel. Um... That's 20, 20, 20, 2006 to present. Um, the manga actually did wrap up, though, in 2017. That's 16 volumes. Yes. But the light novels are still going. Yeah, so she's writing them, just nobody's interested in, you know, right. adapting them. Well, I, who knows? At any rate, uh, yeah, the Spice and Wolf... Uh, we're not going to go into a blow-by-blow -blow plot synopsis as we often do. A, because we're trying to stop doing quite that's quite so much. Because <laughs> this often, would be, yeah, like several many hours. It you know, it goes on. We go on too long, and honestly, it's not really what we're trying to do. <laughs> it was never the intention. It was just kind of something we fell into. Yeah. yeah. Uh, um. <laughs> but uh, also, in the case of Spice and Wolf, it the plot is. Simultaneously, they very they go somewhere, try and sell it. Yeah, but yeah, there's there's a lot of the plot. The basic plot structure is very simple for the most part, but there's a lot of nuance and weird stuff going on. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I you're better served for re basically rewatching it. I what watching it and, and you know you'll, you, there's a lot of nuance and subtle stuff going on that the show does a very good job of explaining to you. But like, if we were to try to explain the plot, then we're basically just redoing what the show does better. Uh, yes. 
<laughs> um. So, Spice Wolf is, uh, it's, let's be real here, it's a love story. I, that It is, yeah, at yeah, its core, much. it's a love story. Um, uh, and, you know, it's, it's the story of a traveling merchant by the name of, of Lord, Kraft Lawrence, uh, and, um, a wolf goddess by the name of Hollow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much. Oh, the wise wolf. Which is something she will tell you over and over again. She's pretty darn smart. <laughs> no, she is. She is very clever. It's... Though not necessarily wise, but very clever. <laughs> I don't know. She ha- she has she has a certain wisdom. A lot of her wisdom is also in in influenced by the fact that she is a wolf. <laughs> yes, this is true. Um but yeah, Lawrence is that it's a, a traveling peddler um, and a traveling merchant. And one day, you know, sort of when he's near a town that has this, you know, is, that you know, this village that you know they they're harvesting their wheat, they've got this ceremony, they've got this sort of ritual thing they do for this, you know, harvest go- har- harvest deity that, um, uh, you know, to you know that's been they've been deeming somewhat fickle, um, who is apparently called hollow and is wolf themed hmm. basically it's a, it's a, it's yeah, an they're... old pagan town that you know they pray to the the wolf god hollow that keeps their harvests plentiful yep. yeah and they have this this big like festival involving uh involving it with like a, a big wolf made of straw and someone plays the r- role of hollow in it and you know fun times Yep. Yeah, the, the usual sort of like legends that you know around harvest time hollow can turn into a young woman and and visit the villages and and interact with the you know with the, with the mortals and uh, and and have fun and all this sort of stuff in return for the the bountiful harvest that she gets so yeah the, one of the local girls dresses up blah 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 they have this whole thing yeah the the what the person who, who who finishes harvest last apparently is officially hollow yeah uh for the for the, uh, the the bit, but at any rate, so and the person this time is uh, Lawrence's of uh, an acquaintance of Lawrence's, who's a young young woman by the name of crap. I forgot her name. Chloe. Chloe. Yes. Chloe. Yes. It um, was a C name. I was trying to remember. <laughs> who um, basically has sort of looked uh, looked up at looked at Lawrence as something of a bit of a mentor figure. Uh, yeah, you know, because she wants to be she wants to become a, uh, she wants to be a, get into you know. Mer- be basically become a merchant also, um, and she also has you know a bit of a crush on him, and just, is not s- and is not subtle about it. Hmm. No, she comes on hard, <laughs> and he's kind of thick about it. I'm not sure how thick he. I'm, it's 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 debatable whether it's he's thick about it or if he's just not actually that interested in her. I, I'm not, it's hard to tell with it's hard to tell yeah. with Lawrence. <laughs> Yeah, it's not until second season where he actually like start. He start actually stops being thick about things. <laughs> he's he's a very internal character for for the season yes. one. Oh, uh, by the way, we're covering, but we're, we're we did both season one and two. They're twelve. They're thirteen episodes. Thirteen or fourteen episode season. Uh, thirteen episode. Uh, uh, I think it's thirteen each. Yeah. Yeah, they're yeah. thirteen each. Uh, so a total twenty six episodes. Um, Lawrence is a very sort of reserved internal person who's very sort of observant and sort of he sort of molds himself to be to be to get along with the people he's around so you know he he's a bit of a social chameleon yeah yes um which you know serves him well in what he does uh, yes i think he's also got the sense of mind to, to realize and he, he, he phrases a few times about his dream of like building money moving around and eventually opening up his own his own store uh, in a, in a town, and he does say that you know that sort of, this lifestyle is makes it difficult for him to 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 find a wife and all that kind of stuff. Yep. And um, as much as yeah, Chloe may come on strong, I think he's also got that presence of mind to think, well, there's no point because I'm going to be leaving in like a day. Yeah. Um, once I've got my load, and I'm not going to be back around this way till maybe next year. Right. Now, so. So basically, she goes off to do the little ritual thing, but she lets him know that she'll she'll you know she'll want to want meet up for a drink later, and he's like, okay, sure, because you know she's a friend, he's got no problem with that. 
Um, but you know, he basically goes off to be away from the festival for a little while because he's like, yeah, this is not my town. Not really a part of things here. So, uh, I'm going to go off to the, uh, go off to the outside town for a little while and, you know, just enjoy the stars and some jerky. And what's that noise coming from my cart? (laughs) Why is there a naked chick in my cart? Yeah, there's. there's so he opens his cart. And there's, 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 there's a naked chick with wolf ears in the tail, who steals his jerky. He's gonna eat that jerky. <laughs> um, and thus we're introduced to Hollow. Um, and there's a lot of sort of they, they sort of talk. They talk for a little while, and you know. She basically talks for a little while. He doesn't buy that she's a god, and he and she's like, "Oh, I'm totally a fucking god." Yeah, I turned into a giant wolf anytime I want. I'll prove it. Uh, you'll you'll freak out. <laughs> no, I won't freak out. Prove it. it. You'll you'll freak out. No, I won't. Okay. See, you're freaking out. I <laughs> Wow. Told you you'd freak out. <laughs> he didn't freak out as badly as he could have. This is he fainted. True. He sort of fell down his little kid, like, uh... Uh, that's... That, that's that's larger and more predatory than I was anticipating. <laughs> you know, that is tickling all these sort of... The monkey the monkey brain is like, ah, big predator. Uh, yeah. uh... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This, she, is, she is not good doggo. She is good rhino. <laughs> In wolf form, she is very large. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know... And, and we're not talking. And Gab's right. Like you know, not like dire wolf size. We're talking like you know, rhino. She, Gab's right. Rhinoceros size is not far off. She's bigger she than most horses by a noticeable that. margin. Yeah. yeah. She is freaking huge. <laughs> um. But they talk for a while, and he, she basically has decided that, you know, the town really doesn't need her anymore and doesn't really want her anymore. And, and she kind of wants to go home. And well, she's kind of bored with it. They're doing a whole thing about that. She starts going through about how, you know, the <clears throat> definitely not Catholic church is moving her in and, and like getting rid of all the, like the, the independent pagan sort of religions and, and uh, the townsfolk are turning towards uh, the totally not one true god and forgetting the old gods um, and that's even when they're not blaming her for the bad harvest which she, she says look yeah okay I did cause one or two bad harvests you know why? because the soil is like shit round here you don't give it time off we ain't gonna get nothing next year <laughs> she's she's she. I mean she doesn't swear but she's fairly belligerent and you know she's not a yeah. she's, she's not a um she doesn't mince her words. Let's just put it that way. Yeah, yeah. she's pretty direct. But you know, she's 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 like saying, like, "I've done what I can. Like, I had this agreement with these people, but you know, they don't. They clearly don't want me around anymore. Let's see how they get on by themselves." Also, I kind of want to go home. I haven't been home in you know a long time. Yeah, and I'm immortal, so a long time is uh... a long time. I'm, yeah. <laughs> And so she makes a deal with Lawrence that you know to basically she'll tra- if he's willing, willing to travel with her, she, to help her get to at least help her get home some part of the way at least. Um, and she'll help him out because you know she's a goddess and is smart. Also, you know, traveling with someone else is generally a lot. If if, if you get along, it's actually a lot. It's, it's a lot. You know, it's actually not a bad thing. <laughs> yeah, they're. they're, they're... Conversation is nice. Yes. Um. So, but yeah. So he basically goes back to town to you know a- after a discussion with her after the festival sort of wrapped up. Chloe swings by basically because he's got a room. So Chloe, Chloe swings by to chat and have a drink. She makes an offer that she's got. She's heard about you know a, a deal that might be very profitable, and she'd like to be partners with with Lawrence on it. And he's like, um. Hmm. Maybe something good. Maybe something really bad. <laughs> I honestly like. It's like she is not an experienced merchant. 
And it doesn't help that every time she's talking about it, she's leaning in with a knowing look when she says yeah. partners. Yeah. He's like, <laughs> uh. Or you're like, or lounging back on a pile of straw in a somewhat suggestive way. Yeah. yeah. Like like we said, she's not subtle about it. Yeah. To be fair, I'll be I'll be honest, and that I kinda I kinda found that quite refreshing in this. Oh yeah. None of the women are in this. No. Yeah. <laughs> You do not get typical like damsel style people in the show. These are all no. hard nosed. You know, they 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 live in a medieval European setting. They they don't fuck about. <clears throat> and the the major female characters, they know what they want. Yeah. Oh yes. And they're not afraid to say it. Yeah. Which is refreshing from from a lot of other anime. <laughs> um. Screw you, Sundore. Yeah, Jesus. <laughs> um, so, Lawrence basically says, yeah, I'll have to pass on that. Sorry, just, I... Mm. So he ends up traveling, so, you know, Chloe eventually says, okay, well, gotta go, bye. He he gives us some story about we, um not being valuable if he, if he waits too long, so he has to leave with his bundle that he's yep. got. Yeah, he's he's got a bug out because you know he got hit before the market gets flooded, you know, and uh, yeah, if I if I don't leave now, then all the other wheat merchants will get there and the price will drop because of oversupply. So I gotta go. Bye. <laughs> but you know, he's actually making himself sound very sincere about it because he's very good at this sort of thing. Yes, he's not entirely wrong. <laughs> no, he's telling the truth mostly. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, his pattern, his usual sort of the way he talks, is works well on virtually everybody, with one major exception. Yes, <laughs> which is hollow. The, the, the chick he's got in the cart right now. <laughs> At any rate, so thus begins the show, and you know he and Hollow start traveling together. Um, she basically points out that you know she can. As long as, you know, he's got the wheat that she's, she's inhabiting nearby, she can basically just sort of, you know, basically disappear and then reappear in the wheat again. I mean, wherever the wheat is, because that's sort of, you know. Um, as long as the wheat hasn't been processed. It hasn't been processed, as long as it's still wheat. Yeah. Um, he asks if it'll work if it's basically, if it's fresh, just so it's just the, the wheat kernels. And she's like, yeah, that should work. So they do it and they put the, 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 the wheat kernels into, a, you know, a baggie that she wears around her neck. Yep. Um, she um, borrows the good clothes he'd he'd sort of gotten together. Uh, <laughs> yeah, she's been she's been absolutely you know butt ass naked this entire time up to this point because she's a wolf god. Of course she is. Yeah. yeah she's a, I don't need pants most of the time. <laughs> I don't feel cold. And she's like, and he's like, but those were my clothes. Like, yep, they're nice. Actually, they they are very nice. I look good, don't I? But he, but he, the, the, it's not the point. <laughs> I was going to sell those. <laughs> well, now you have to me for nothing. <laughs> to be fair, she, he um he does insist that she pay him back for those clothes, mm -hmm. and she agrees. Uh, yes, they actually for a good chunk of the first like overtly they have a very fiduciary relationship. Yes. Um. She has agreed to travel with him, and that she will pay. She will work to pay back the what he pay the the money he he spends on on her for food and lodging and such. Right. She has no intention of basically him just you know carrying her where she's going. She will help. And, she will pay him back. Yeah. Yeah. That that's the thing. I mean, like you say, she she's <clears throat> as you said, she's already you know she's she's very she's she's old, but not in a a, a cranky cotton kind of way, just in a experienced kind of way yes. you know it's law of the wild sort of thing you know if i do something you know if i do something for you 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 know you'll do something for me and vice versa kind of thing Look, i'm you know i'm not taking anything for free i'll you know i'll work my I'll, I'll i'll everything's in balance kind of thing she does every now and again get that you know old lady hollow talking about all them kids running around yeah um 
but very rarely and usually she gets put in a place pretty quick. Um, depending on the situation, there's a couple of times where she's actually kind of in the right because humans are fucking stupid. Yeah, but... yeah. <laughs> and then there are a few times where she totally shows up. Uh, crap, uh, Lawrence. But, um, sometimes at his own game. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because again, it's... she's really smart. She's. <laughs> incredibly cunning is a better way to put it. Well, it's, it's, not, it's, not, it's not just the cunning, though. She's actually very smart. Yes. Well, the, I think the, she the, learns well, what, very quickly. She she learns very quickly. She's very smart, but what I'm most impressed about with her uh, mental acuity is her cunning. Mm -hmm. She's very good at just coming up with the shit on the fly and making it work. Sure. And again, and again, she's also got again, like I said a moment ago, she's also got that experience factor mm -hmm. of knowing, you know, how far she can push people, or, or you know, she's not, she's not just like ignored. She, it's not one of those stories where she comes in and it's like, oh, what is this human concept you call a comb? It's like, no, she likes combs; they brush her tail. Yes, <laughs> you know, she, she, she's, she's, she's world wise, just maybe not. I mean, there's integrated. a lot, there's a lot of concepts she's not aware of that she picks right. up on very quickly. Yeah. But she there's several that she's like, okay, Lawrence, what is this? Uh-huh. Okay, got it. Done. Okay, this cur okay, currency. I totally understand how currency works. Like, okay, I understand cool. how currency cool. works. Why are there 20 silver different coin? silver coins? Yeah, how come this silver coin, which weighs the same amount as this silver coin, is worth more? Well, you see, due to the... And he explains the differences in, like... How they're printed and like the the economies that back them and whatnot, and she's like, oh, okay. okay. It's this still is actually a major plot point for one of the arcs. In yes, solving currency exchange. Yes, <laughs> and she gets it. She thinks some of it's kind of dumb because she's right. <laughs> right. Because <laughs> economics is kind of weird voodoo sometimes. Yes, especially medieval era economics. Yes. Um, also, back when Gab mentioning this, you know, the totally not the Catholic Church. That's just for the anime. Yeah. It is actually the Catholic Church in the manga and light novels. Right. Uh, and was going to be in the anime until somebody at the, at somebody at the uh, not the studio, the, uh, the 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 TV stations were watching the watching the and like, um, you know, guys, <laughs> this might be a problem later on. It might be a problem later on. Could we just sort of you know make it less overt? And the studio's like. Fine, it's not hard to make it not overt. I mean, it's still obviously the Catholic Church. It's still obviously the Catholic Church is that we don't longer have crucifixes everywhere. <laughs> yeah, they basically just edited out the crucifixes and removed. They, they never, they never say Catholic. Yeah, yeah. they just call it's it like the church. The, it's like the Virgin Mary becomes the Mother Mary. Yeah, the uh, the, the Holy, uh, Mother, the Holy right? Mother. Yeah, the Holy Mother. That's it. Yeah, which is fine, and you know, and while the Church is. I, I will say definitively, the church is definitively an antagonist in a bunch of the arcs, a few mm. of the arcs. They're never portrayed as... They're never portrayed as more evil than any... More, more sort of well villainous than anybody else. The church themselves never actually do anything. There's a lot of stuff that happens in the name of the church. Uh, and a couple of clergy clergymen are... Um, do some uh, dubious things, shall we say? <laughs> I, I was going to say there is definitely the, uh, the the shepherd girl they run into yep. was actively trying to get her killed to see whether or not she is a pagan. Yep. <laughs> like that's pretty. Yep. That's pretty shitty. Yes, yeah. I agree. And as, and my point is that's not any much more shitty than some than uh, than some uh, many other antagonists in the show. Okay, yeah. there, there are some trade companies that do that, but I expect that of trade companies. They're filthy <laughs> trade companies. Well, no, you, think you about it. It's medieval, the medieval venture it's capitalists. Medi Fuck those guys. Dude, it's medieval Europe, and they suspect that this girl might be a, a pagan witch, and right. they haven't strung her up. They've yeah, actually let her go out and, you know, and prove... Uh, well, because know, they can make use of her that way. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> She's pr providing an actual service, so, you know... <laughs> and they're well, not they're not the church doesn't have quite as much sway yet as they will would later yeah but like you, you get like you get like every now and again you'll get like a mob doing something on you know because the church will want to know this or we need to 
do this for the church or because of our religion. But the church themselves never, you never see anybody come out, like a representative of the church come out and be the bad guy. With, as I said, with one notable exception. Yeah. The yeah. last arc. Hmm. The, the bishop, uh, definitely one of the sort of background antagonists of that, that arc. Yeah. yeah. And is doing remarkably shady shit. And, uh, his actions end up completely screwing Lawrence over. <laughs> yeah. But, you know... But anyways. He's not a direct antagonist, though. He, he's he's not the direct antagonist, no. To some of the bullshit happening. Yeah, it's, it's, things happened within the world politically that fucked over the antagonist. It wasn't, you know, anyone going after them. Particularly. Oh, no, no. They, Although, they, he was they, being a... He was being a corrupt priest in medieval Europe. So, oh, yeah. You know, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, that never happened. He was sm he was totally not smuggling salt. He was smuggling salt. <laughs> or he was involved in smuggling salt, I should say. Which you wouldn't think was a big thing deal, but inland Europe. <laughs> yeah, no, that, mm. <laughs> that. There's a reason why Romans paid some of their legionaries in salt. <laughs> yep, that's where the term salary comes from. At any rate, um, yes. So the you know the story you know it's you know the early story is you know Lawrence and Hollow traveling together, Lawrence doing some trading, finding about this whole this whole, th you know he runs into somebody who has knows something about the fact that you know there's a there's a possibility to make a boatload of money in a currency uh ex currency deal, um because he's got insider information that some country some country is going to be de devaluing their their silver coinage. And Lawrence is like, hmm. And you know, he basically offers to. T he, he doesn't tell Lawrence that outright until after he you know. Lawrence agrees to a deal that you know he, that if you know if Lawrence takes advantage of it and makes money, then he gets ten percent of the, the the dude gets ten percent of the profit. And Lawrence is like, okay. Sure. Um. And you know that leads to the first major, the first sort of major arc. Which, uh, so, you know, involves, you know, he and Hollow sort of, you know, investigating, trying to figure out, you know, which country is devaluing the currency, how they can take advantage of this. Uh, you know, Lawrence makes a deal with a, a major trading company who, one of whom, whom turned out to be one of the few trading companies we, we run into in the show who were actually seemed like they're decent folk. Uh, okay. one of two, basically. Yeah. The, the trading company he's a member of is one of them, and this other one. But yeah, they're, they're basically just trying to use insider information to do a, a buy low, sell high kind of scheme. Yes. Um, I, I will state from this point onwards, if you haven't picked this up yet, uh, listen to this. This show is primarily, yes, it's a love story, but it's also... It, if you have an interest or a love in uh, economics, trade, and all that kind of stuff, this is right up your alley. It's Hi. basically, a, it's a show about <laughs> economics and trade, and a wolf god is there. It's a show about Just economics and cross. trade, with a great love story, and the whole thing feels like Neil Gaiman decided to write a, a fairy tale. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, Like, one of those things should be up your alley. <laughs> um, So, long story short, you know... Rival trading no mess, company though. basically decides, re realizes that Lawrence is involved and sees, sees Lawrence and basically, okay, this guy's going to cut in on our deal. We have to take him out. So they basically start to capture him. Uh, but at least to Hollow being captured, um, she basically says, okay, look, we need to get, you need to get to the, the friendly trading company so that you can make a deal and... And I'll, I'll be able to distract them. I'm... I can, let's be honest here. I'm a wolf. I can run faster, longer, and you know, worst case, I could turn into a wolf and eat them. <laughs> <laughs> and even if I do get captured, you'll you, you'll be free and can come and save me. Okay, deal. And he's like, but I, but I don't know you. Oh, she's run off already. <laughs> okay, I, I guess I'll take advantage of that. I mean, she's not wrong, but it feels kind of wrong to have it, right. Yeah. Right, not just a pretty girl. Not just a pretty girl. <laughs> right, 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 right. Elder God, God, gotcha. 
<laughs> Lawrence is the 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 show is primarily about Lawrence and Hollow's relationship um, and yes. how it develops. And and, they become utterly adorable together. Oh God, yes. <laughs> um, and you know Lawrence is you know it. It's very clear, very early on that Lawrence definitively is, finds her very attractive. Yes, um, as any sane man would. <laughs> um, and over time, it's not just a physical thing. It, he eventually, it's like, yeah, I really like her. She's what what I really like watching is him going from being so easily flustered and, and on edge around her. Yep while trying to be nice to like bantering and teasing her back she spent a lot of time teasing him and mm. that like bond bond poking poking the bear kind of way yeah and towards the end he starts teasing her right back and they're adorable with a good amount of banter and yes trying to get each other's goat it's great yes <laughs> yeah to, to the point where she lay, to Rosetta's like wait wait when did this happen <laughs> <laughs> when did you all of a sudden get comfortable around me I mean I'm not complaining I'm just don't know when it happened. <laughs> He's so adorable, and you'd blush all the time. Oh, you're... and he had some come back to that. that I don't remember off the top of my head that made me chuckle. <laughs> <laughs> it's and the, the and the thing is, I don't remember when it changed. It just <laughs> happened, and it felt natural, and in, like in part of the way they developed the way their their relationship is written is brilliant. Yes, because yeah. that entire change, you don't, it is, flows very naturally, and, and, like, it's a testament to the voice actors and the writing. Oh, yeah. And all this other stuff going on, because it, you don't notice it till Hollow notices it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so, you know, Lawrence basically goes to the trading company, Hollow does get captured by the church. Or is captured by the training company who are threatening to, who end up they're threatening, threatening to turn her over to the church because the they're like, yeah, she's got wolf ears and a wolf tail. She's some sort of weird fairy thing. They will burn her at the stake. <laughs> um, and so Lawrence is like, okay, yeah, she's run off. I don't know if she'd be okay, etc. I need need help. And the training company's like, mm, I mean, yeah, you're you brought us the whole thing with the silver. We're really appreciative of that. But we can't do much of anything on that. And you know, maybe she'll be okay. And there's a letter, and uh, he reads for you, Lawrence reads it. And it's like, ah. They're gonna be turning over the church, and the you know the tra- the, the 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 you know the, the rep- local representative of the company is like that. That sucks. What do you want us to do? I mean, we're in sort of a bit of a bind here, both both way, both sides, etc. And Lawrence basically, okay, yeah. Um, be, her being turned. It's not just that she's like my traveling companion and I care about her. Um, it's being her being. I mean, there's that, but it's like it, her being turned over the church means more than you think it does. And he actually explains what Hollow is, and the tra- training company is like, ah, okay, yeah, I understand why that would upset you if you actually care about her. Okay, I will take into account that you know the um, the the boss of this trading company takes into the facts of yes, yeah, she's an elder god in his fucking stride. Yeah. Yeah, he's when I like say elder god. I mean, like an old god. I don't mean like face yeah, yeah. temples and like <laughs> no. Outside we're not, of we're, we're not talking Lovecraftian. We're talking just like you know old gods. You know, well, as, yes. as far as as far as up to this point we've concerned, magic itself doesn't exist in this world. Not to the humans, anyway. Nope. But it's like, oh yeah, no, no, she's an old god. god what? Well, you know, yeah, she's tall, the wise wolf. You know, there's yeah. that uh, the harvest goddess down down the village down there. Yeah, it's her. Yeah. She's actually from up north. Okay, then. She's Canadian. <laughs> Please, they're in Europe. It's al- she's almost certainly Sc- Scandinavian. Oh, absolutely. Sort. She's Scandinavian. <laughs> she might be Russian. That's possible, yeah. It's hard she's, to tell. She's either Scandinavian or, or, or Slavic. They are pretty vague. So Although, where, roughly they are. red hair. Red hair. She's almost certainly Scandinavian. Yeah. Never mind. Um, but long as it, it's that's not it's really not that important is the thing. No. But um, I also point out that Eric caught this is they as they travel north the names start becoming more and more slightly Germanic. It's actually really neat the, yes. the people they run into. And they stop drinking wine and start drinking beer. Yeah. <laughs> really and clever look. show. <laughs> yeah. 
Lots of those, all those little details keep coming up. Oh, she might be German. She might just be German also. Mm. Could be. But at any rate, moot point. Um, so basically they come up with, Lawrence and the, tra- the trading company are like, okay, We'll help. Okay, so Lord's like, okay, so if you can help me rescue her, we can go on the run until you guys can complete the trade deal and use that to buy to basically back, buy the back the trade other trade company off, because they clearly want something out of this. They don't they don't know where we are in the deal. If we can get ahead of them, we can get stuff that we can trade to them that will buy them off, and everyone will be ha- will be okay with that. And the trade company is like, all right. We'll still be making money. We'll still be getting favors from the from the from the king of the country that's doing the devaluing. Because we'll basically, you know, basically, here's all these coins we're buying up. We're not going to completely screw you over and tell everybody about this ahead of time. Hmm. Uh what concessions do you want? <laughs> um, and so they arrange to have him, help him bust bust Hollow out. Um. It's some pretty cloak and dagger shit, to be fair. Yeah, it's actually really cool. It yeah. is the... This is, I think, it's one of the two most action-oriented bits of the show. Mm. And uh, as usual, even the action stuff is mostly sort of building tension, and then, you know, it's a lot It's a lot of tension building, which is actually really cool, yes. honestly. Um, Hollow's a little embarrassed that someone else... That it wasn't Lawrence who came to the room to get her out, it was somebody else. Um... <laughs> yeah, she's actually for more than a little annoyed. <laughs> more like, what? What do you want? I'm, I'm a merchant, not not some action hero. <laughs> they already had a guy on the inside. They had a guy on the inside. That was his job. <laughs> From up north, you should have come screaming in there with a great sword or Dane axe, taking everyone's heads, and then like that, that's the way it should have been done. Just just not the way you're supposed to do it, Lawrence. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm a merchant from... I get the impression they're from France. I'm not sure. If, if Yeah, if the, the wine regions and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, it's, yeah the, the whole countryside that you scream. It's, it, he, it, the, the, oh, it's, you know, it's, Fra- it's Spain, France, or Italy. Yeah, I don't think it's Spain. Cause, I don't um, either. The, the, yeah. And... It, it screams northern France moving up into Belgium and that's, Germany. That's my guess, yeah. too. Um. Yeah, I want to say France, just not, but not Spain or Germany. I mean, he's a merchant, so my first thought is Venice, but clearly not in Venice. Oh no, there's not near enough water. <laughs> oh no, they're and you know they're, they're the farmers are growing wheat. Um, yeah, and lar- in large fields, which means not Italy. Uh, <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah, I want to say France. I, 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 I would France. I would agree with that, but uh, at any rate, not again, not the most important thing. Not not important. Just yeah. Um. Uh, at any rate, so and also it doesn't take them that long to get to the sort of more Germanic territories, so I definitively think they're somewhere in northern France. I would agree with that. Yeah. yeah. Um Again, it's it's also medieval era, so all this sort of na- national stuff doesn't really matter. Yeah, it's a lot of small small kingdoms, really. City uh, states mostly. Yeah. Um So they so basically, he and Hollow basically sort of you know are you know stuck around in town, and they have to basically bust out of town through the sewers. Um, and you know the the opposing guild eventually figures out that they're down in the sewers and send people to chase them. Um, Hollow eventually is able to say, "Okay, I can smell fresh air coming from down this way. We've got a way out." And, and Lawrence's like, "Awesome, <laughs> great!" And they're going down, going down, and they come to a dead end at the bottom of a dry well. Mm. And Hollow's like, oh. Oh, oops. I am so sorry, Lawrence. I think this is after, this, that was actually after Lawrence got hurt, though, if I remember correctly. Yeah, yes. yeah I, think, I think he catches a... a he he tries, some, somebody catches it with him and uh, blindsides him as they go around a corner, and the dude's got a knife. And uh, Lawrence gets slashed in the arm. He, he, he had stabbed, fully stabbed in the arm, if I remember correctly, actually. Yeah. Well, I, mean, he, to be, I, I I'll, I'll remember be, it was a gut wound, not a serious one. No, no, it was, it was, no, it was, no. It was an arm wound. That's okay. what got us. So it's the animation, and uh, maybe it is a fault of the animator, but 
I at first thought it was a, he actually took it straight in the gut. But um, as it progressed, you know, they they were bandaging his arm, they were teeing the tendon his arm, blood was dripping down his, you know, from out under the Right, right, yeah, I'm, re- I'm remembering now, yeah. So, um, but yeah. He does pass out from blood loss briefly. Like, he was going, Hollow's like, you're hurt, we should stop. And Hollow's, he's like, no, we can't. I, I'm okay, we'll keep going, keep going. Thunk. And Hollow's like, god damn it. <laughs> All right, I've bandaged you. Are you conscious? Can you, are you okay? He's like, ah. Uh, I think so. A little lightheaded. All right. Well, I'm gonna go devour these guys. Um, well, that that that, yeah. th- that doesn't happen until they're cornered, right? At the end of the at the end of the thing, and we reveal to the person the person who was sort of behind targeting them and basically cap- trying to capture you know Hollow and right, which is in fact Chloe. She's the one who's brought who brought the deal the same deal idea to these guys that Lawrence brought to um, the training company he's working with. Uh, and you know she's like she's eventually you know she's she was doing this but she's like basically trying to cut Lawrence out so that he basically have to deal with her and then they could go into business together. But she's still sort of angling for that. Yeah. Um, and now that she's got Hollow, she's like, great, I can turn Hollow over to the church. She'll be limited. Now we won't have to worry. We won't. We'll never have to deal with her again. Which is you know the category of okay. I mean. Hollow's leaving. <laughs> but I mean, it's sort of a definitive end to, you know, her influence over, over the, you know, her, the, you know, Chloe's own village. Yeah. If she's, you know, if the church, you know, remo- is officially able to, you know, deal with her. Well, I mean, it also, like, it's, it's, you know, Chloe's village ad- adopting the, the church itself. Yep. Yeah, you know, that's, that's, yeah. Yeah, so he goes on goes on about like how we're no longer will be bound to the, the whims of old gods and the old ways should be forgotten and done away with and I was like yeah yeah that, that that's that's great kid um, do you have any idea how pissed off I am right now? <laughs> well, it, it, Hollow's pissed off, but she's willing to you know Lawrence is sort of she's willing to let you know let them go if since Lawrence seems to be willing to walk, just walk away from all of this. Yeah, but then Chloe basically says yeah. Okay, to her goons, yeah, take him out, and is, is and including Lawrence, and since he's refusing her, yeah, and Lawrence has taken up a stance between them and Hollow. You know, because he's like, no, I'm I'm not letting you guys get to Hollow, and Hollow's like, oh, that's that's really sweet, Lawrence, but uh, that that's adorable, and I, I it's really sweet, and I'm flattered, honestly, but um, I'm gonna murder these fuckers, <laughs> and so she's like, okay. Uh, you know, I can transform. It requires. You know, she told him earlier, I can transform. You know, either need some of your blood or some of the wheat. Well, it's it's live live blood or, or wheat. She needs to yeah. eat specifically. And she's like, she, she tells Lawrence, okay, Lawrence, this is gonna hurt a little bit. <laughs> and she proceeds to basically drink blood from his arm wound. <laughs> right. Um, and you know, everybody's like, "What's what is this chick doing?" And oh my god, that's a big wolf. Everyone proceeds to piss themselves. As honestly, you should when there's a giant angry canine. When I say giant, like ten foot tall at the shoulder. Yeah. And you're stuck in an enclosed tunnel with it. <laughs> it's a big tunnel. Like Chloe literally just goes fucking statue rigid. Yeah. She just doesn't move. It's just like, oh fuck. Like she, Hollow runs past her, dealing with everyone else, and by the time she comes back and she like levels her eyes with Chloe. Chloe still hasn't moved. Nope. She's not even registered that Hollow's come back. She's just like, big wolf, big, big, big wolf, big doggy, big wolf, wolf, dog, wow, big wolf. <laughs> you can see your EKJ just sort of like flat line up on the <laughs> Now, to, 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 the, to her credit, Hollow doesn't actually deliberately kill anyone. There's, There's no killing by trampling and knocking people around. And yeah, there are a lot terrible. of people who were badly injured at a minimum, but oh yes, but she didn't go in with teeth. She went in with snout and just knocked them around, basically. And she, she tramples one or two guys, easily. but yeah, yeah. Well, it's just a broken leg. It'll be fine, probably. <laughs> with yeah, with medieval medicine, they'll totally be fine, Gav. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least he'll get an attractive ornament for his leg. Yeah. He'll get to enjoy his peg, yes. Yes. 
Um, assuming he survives the amputation. Ah, you run the risks, you know. I mean, he went into a medieval sewer for a start, so, you know. It's actually what the cleanest medieval sewer I think I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah. seen, seen depicted, so, it really you know. is. <laughs> um, so, long story short, yeah, she basically, you know, Lawrence is freaking out a bit because, you know, uh, Giant Wolf and Hall is like, oh, right, yeah, that's going to freak him out. Yeah, that's only still the second time he's seen it. So he's like, it actually gives him flashbacks of the first time. He's yeah. like, oh, wow, yeah. Because he, he didn't even really register what he saw the first time. He's like, oh, yeah, fuck. <laughs> that's what and it, really it looks, is. it sort of, it, it looks like she's like, you know, just leaving. And he's like, no, you you got to pay me back for the clothes still. Hello? He, well, unfortunately, he passes out because he's still losing blood. Yeah, but he does, yeah. he does call that out before she disappears. Yeah. Um, he wakes up at the trading company. Uh, and the guy, the dude there's like, yeah, okay, so um, everything seems to have worked out pretty well. We actually got our deal done. Uh, your share of the profits off the actual currency deal is we we and we got we got the concessions we wanted. We we're able to trade those for you know, getting the trading company off of you and Hollow's back. Your share of the the currency transaction was, I think, like like a couple, it's like 150 uh, silver or something like that. Something like this. It was not. It was around about 100, 200 silver or something like that. I, I did like the uh, the line that yeah. it comes out with. Like um, uh, Lawrence is like, how, "How did how did you find me?" He says, "Well, you know, there was a whole lot of noise coming from the sewer, um, and a lot of the other trading companies' guys running out." Um, we came down there, and we would have we would have actually got you up here much sooner. But there was a ten foot wolf stopping anyone getting past us, uh, getting getting anywhere near you until we proved who we were. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> so it, it, it's okay, uh, but I've got some more good news for you. Yeah, so uh, the concessions that they wanted, they really wanted. So uh, we were able to sell it for quite a lot, the concessions over to them for quite a lot of money. <laughs> uh, so you're getting a bonus out of this. How does a thousand silver sound? And he's like, what? Well, it's much better than the 200 that they completely boned us out of, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good deal when the bonus is over five times more than the actual pay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> because he, basically, he's like, there's... Your share will be this much, but there's this fee and this fee that we had to, we had to take care of and such. So you're actually only getting this much. However, there's a bonus of a thousand silver. Okay. <coughs> like Lawrence is completely okay with what what he was getting. He was like, "Yeah, it was less than I was expecting," but honestly, at this point, I'm getting out with my, getting out alive and with some with some profit. I'll de I'll, yeah. de I'll take it. <laughs> it's the ultimate goal of a businessman: alive, profit, done. So, uh, do you want this? Do you want your thousand silver in cash, or you know, credit or goods? And he's like, Lawrence, like pepper. I want it in pepper. And they're like, you are a smart man. And we were all like, he is a smart man. man. <laughs> <laughs> Ever the businessman. Yep. Pepper is really easy to transport, and it's worth a truckload. I return and will sell for a fuck ton up north. Yep. <laughs> Where he's going. Yep. Because he's got a hot wolf chick to carry up there. <laughs> well, he's not certain of that at this point. But he's assuming that she's gone at this point until someone mentions that someone had charged a bunch of goods to to, 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 to the company account. And he's like, what the? Oh. Oh. Okay. I misunderstood what she was doing. So he goes to chases after, which is actually very cute. Yes. <laughs> that's the first arc. Yep. Uh, that's the one we're going to go into the most detail on, honestly. Mm. Um, it, it gives you a good sense of, of how the how the show most the, the, most of the story arcs from here on out sort of follow a similar structure, basically. Of yeah, the, there's the, a the trade basic deal. Structure is Lauren finds out about a trade deal, shit gets fucked up. They bail each other out, move on. Yeah. <laughs> and usually they bail each other out. It's actually, which I really yes. dig about it. It's very much them bailing each other out. Although yeah. I do want to mention the, a an extended thing where they, um, where Lawrence is trying to find out more about where um, Hollow's from and runs into a chronicler in the, uh, in the, 
what is obviously intended to be the Jewish ghetto in like a Prague suburb. <laughs> yeah. Um. They 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 wave it off saying it's it's where all the alchemists live and people don't like alchemists. Which, to be fair, was true because alchemists blew shit up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But uh, but yeah, and um, he finds out some not so great legends about where she's from, in that it was eaten by a giant moon bear. <laughs> yeah, I hate when that happens. Yeah, I mean, fucking moon bears, man. <laughs> so he 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 wants to confirm this before uh, informing her, and th this cause she finds out this causes a, something of a rift between them. Which is exploited by that arc's antagonist. Who but, is uh, a later we find out Yeah. Later on we find out that the um that Hollow had also seen the same archivist archivist. And they'd gotten along great because yeah, she's a she's another elder god. <laughs> Having adapted to the times. Yep. <laughs> yeah, she's an air an air god that took the form of a bird. Yeah. A raiden, I believe. I think yeah. Uh, no, because it's the white feathers that. Her, oh, uh, you're right. It was a, I think it was the swan. Yeah, but there's so many ravens hanging out in, uh, around her place. She, I, my gut, my gut feeling is a white raven. Yeah. yeah. Which fits in that whole sort of mythological BC thing very well. Yeah. Well, yeah. I thought it was an owl. Could be an owl. I, I like I, said, I think I've got the I, I got the impression it was a swan, but it might not have been. No, she's way too. She seemed way too predatory. She she's way yeah. too predatory, way too cagey to be a swan, and right. not nearly violent enough. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's a good point. <laughs> yeah, swans are dicks. So yeah, um. So yeah, the second the third the, the second arc uh ends they, they basically, you know, Lawrence the second arc's problem is actually Lawrence getting a bit greedy. Yeah. And it coming back to bite him hard. And then him finding a way out of it and then people completely and then the people he's working with to get his to work his way out of this horrible position he's gotten himself into. Betraying him and Hollow and then him and Hollow turning it around on them to come out with a, yes. with actually some money. <laughs> yeah. So Lawrence is no longer in debt and actually has a little, has some money left over, just not as much as he had before. I will notice, at least in these first two arcs, at the, the very least, both the protagonists and the antagonists come out basically having what they want. Uh, the antagonists in the second arc are in much less good position than they than the they were before. Yeah. They were they are, but they still came out with more than they had. Their their um, their profits their profits weren't as high. The they, yeah, the current company gets sticked over pretty badly. If I remember, they that. do, but they still got the the concessions that they wanted. They had they had to pay more for it than they wanted to. No, no, the se the, the second the second trade company the, 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 the second, second arc. One, the second one with the with the shepherdess. The second trade oh, company. Oh right, they they yeah. they they I they am thinking, wonder. Sorry, no, I skipped those guys. I was yeah. thinking about the the first one of the second season. Right, like oh, they go okay. under if I remember correctly. Uh, no, they're not. They 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 are st they are just short of going under. Right, Lawrence left them in enough just enough position that they are actually able to stay afloat. They were basically in effectively the same position, except they they their issue they they were now indebted to Lawrence's guild. Right. I, I I actually like that arc more, less for the um, less for the economic side of it, and more for the fact that it's about as far as we go into you know into exploring Hollow's world. Yeah, yeah. because you have, the, her, you have the wolves in the woods, the wolves and, and the shepherd, and. Yep. You know how her... Hollow just really has issues with shepherds. Yeah, like and the the shepherd's dog that like he you know she's like that dog knows what I am. The dog yeah. knows exactly what's going on. I don't like yeah. that dog. Yeah. <laughs> dog's like I'm going to kill that dog. Please keep it away from me. <laughs> and the dog's like that's a big bad. That's a wolf. 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 That's a really that's a really big wolf. Uh, I am keeping between me and my tiny human shepherdess girl. Because 
Fuck, that's a wolf. <laughs> Boss, that's a wolf. What, what? Why are you not? You're not listening to me, are you? What? You, you... <laughs> wolf. Curse my snout and not being able to form human words. Stu that why can't mm, that stupid wolf can talk human? <laughs> That's an unfair advantage. <laughs> There's a great bit where like the um, the shepherd actually asks and wonder wonders why the the dog seems so intent on Hollow, and um, and Hollow cracks the joke about you know the um, he mu he must be in love with me or something like that. And uh, the you get you actually get a little like like a little eyebrow raise that dogs can do, right? You get a little like little reaction out of it, and it's like you don't know whether it's actually understood what that was, what that exchange was, or whether it's just a uh, words. You're making noises. Don't understand those, but it's really well timed. <laughs> but yeah, um. So yeah. yeah. Hindsight is very clearly the the um. It's always like the, she, she, not she, going she, the fuck seriously, dude. You're gonna play me like that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. Oh, but yeah, the yeah Hollow basically they 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 basically they shit goes bad on the way back from their their deal where they're basically smuggling gold basically. Um, that, that's literally what they're doing. Uh, and the company they're working with is, is basically basically a. There's another old big big old wolf, in the, you know, giant wolf in these woods, though a much younger one than Hollow. Yeah. Like it's coming to fuck with him. Well, Hollow's like, okay, yeah, uh, I'll stay behind and deal with it. And she, Lawrence, is like seriously, she's like, yeah, it, it's just, it's another it's another one of my people. It's a wolf like me. I said, I'm much older, and I'll explain to it the, you know, the folly of screwing with me. <laughs> and, the, and, and my people. It'll get it. Trust me. <laughs> um, Unfortunately, they're being screwed over by the trading company, and, you know, they leave. They basically knock Lawrence out and leave him, leave him there to die. Yeah, the, the, the mercs they hired are actually like, well, at least we can leave you to die, because I really don't want to feel... That don't want to be put up for murder. So... Yeah, these, these, I mean, they're, they're, not, they're not, well, I mean, they are mercenaries, but they're not, you know, they're not the killing type. This this company doesn't have the money for those kinds. <laughs> um, you know, they've, they've, they've been told they're going to go out there. They've, they've asked them if they will, but they just, primarily they were there just to get them out of the way. If they can, like, leave them tied up in the forest where there are wolves and let the wolves do it, they're great. That's, that's so much better. We can just, like, keep our reputations completely untarnished. We're fine. We don't kill people. Yeah, the, the I didn't kill, kill anyone. People. Yeah, I, I don't have to get my sins forgiven for that. I mean, the wolves did it. I just tied them up and left them unarmed in the woods. Yeah, on a <laughs> silver plate with a nice side salad. Nice balsamic vinaigrette drizzled all over his face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, you know, Hollow finds Lawrence and is like, okay, what happened? Uh, he explains. She's like, oh, those fuckers. All right, some bitches gonna die, and some bitches do die. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of trampling, but she does not spare the fangs. <laughs> there are things she will put up with. This is not one of them. This is not one of them. <laughs> yeah, these actually caused actual, you know, harm. They they, they uh, tried she, to kill her bay. She was she, not a happy. She, she sees him in like his arms of covered in rope burns where he's just you know just pulled his arms and out actually ropes. an actual literal burns from when he actually used the fire to actually yeah burn, to, to uh, char the ropes yeah yep. she's like aha okay Lawrence if you're just gonna try to tell me to spare them I it, that's really sweet but that's not happening <laughs> <laughs> all right so uh yeah uh, I'm gonna turn back into a wolf uh, we're gonna kill a whole bunch of people, and then we're gonna go we'll go on our way. And Lawrence, come, but Lawrence comes with a plan to actually, you know, get to make some money out of all this tomfoolery. There's um, there's actually a great bit where um, a Hollow and the Sheepdog square off, and as yeah. well as the uh, the Shepherdess, because she's trying to do her job, and there's a giant. I guess I have to deal with the ten foot tall wolf now. Fuck. <laughs> and 
Lawrence is shout something that's overtaken by thunder and hollow keeps going after the mercs basically bouncing over them there's yep. a really sweet moment it's like so whose name did you call out uh, later on after everything's been resolved and hollow and in here are leaving town she's like so whose name did you call out call out when when i when me and the shepherd is squared off yeah there's, oh, there's been a little bit I, of a... I, can, I can tell you my answer is Fuck if I remember, I was delirious. Fuck you, Lawrence. <laughs> there, there was a little bit of an angle going on where um, Hollow was a bit jealous of the uh, of the shepherd. Yes, yep. because Lawrence was like being nice to her and all this sort of stuff. And he, Lawrence is such a fucking troll. It's it's beautiful. <laughs> this is where the, this is where he starts to yes yeah, so starts this, to stand up for himself. Yes, a, 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 in hindsight, this is definitely where the relationship evolved to the point where they can give each other shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Because he's like, okay, I will tell you who it was. Takes his deepest breath because he knows damn well what time it is. And just as he starts to say the name, the fucking the church bells behind him ring out. Yes. And she's like, wait, what? 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 No. Well, I said it. No, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> well, fucking well played. God damn it. <laughs> It really is a moment of oh, fucking well played. Shoot. God damn it, Lawrence. <laughs> he did say it. I just couldn't hear him and I can't read lips. Mm. And that's the end of season one. Uh, season two um, is this. It's more. Season two is much more about their relationship than yes. their wacky trade deal shenanigans. Yeah. I mean, they're still wacky trade deal shenanigans. Second verse, much like the first. Yeah. Um, but uh, he, um, but it's much more about their, their relationship and them coming to grips with how they feel with, with, with each other and Hollow being actively stupid a couple times. And realizing it afterwards. Yes. Uh, it's the it's the whole thing about whether they continue as business partner. You know, like... like what de 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 it's defining their relationship? Yeah. yeah, is is um is Lawrence just helping guide her back to where she came from, their their journey home? Is there something Are more they going business on? partners, or is it something as an actual relationship wise? And, and they, they are honestly stupid a couple times, both of them. Yes, because it's like a, a lot of well, we probably should have just said it. Yeah, we probably should have just said it. All right. Are we made up? We're made up. <laughs> I mean, they're, they're like, say, there's, there's been hints of it for a while because, and Hollow knows full well because back when he met the um, the uh, what's her, what was the name again? Sorry, what, a, a title, the the witch. Um, oh, right, the, the chronicler. The chronicler. Or, or, that's, it. Wait, that's in season two. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, of course it is. Sorry. Yes, yeah, so it is. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, I mean, well, I mean, we're not good covering it bit by bit anyway. But I mean, when when yeah. he meets this archivist, he, he, you know, one of his last questions as he leaves is, um, is there any stories about you know like mortals and and gods being in relationships? And she just says, um, she, she she brushes him off. She doesn't. I think she just says, yes, there is. Uh, good luck. <laughs> and closes close the door, and as it turns out, Hollow was in that fucking room anyway, so she heard the whole damn thing. Right. <laughs> oh dear. But yeah, there, there's a bunch of, of like Hollow, like realizing, it. no, he's gonna grow old and die long before I, I even fucking notice, and having a existential crisis because of that, and Lawrence kind of taking shit for granted and then realizing that he's being stupid and you know relationship stuff yep um and all of which is winding around these lunatic you know trade schemes yeah. well they're not lunatic trade schemes they're they are they're trade schemes but they're not necessarily lunatic uh the first they're, one they're is it's a it it is a massive gamble on Lawrence's part. Oh oh, at the <laughs> yes yes, not want to giving that what not wanting to give that one away, but yes. Lawrence's first scheme involves short selling commodities. 
Yeah. Which is monumentally risky, but it can pay out ridiculously well. Um, the second one is not is not a lunatic trade scheme. It's actually very smart and clever. It's just that he gets screwed over in the end. It's just that he gets ticked over, and there's a there there are little riots in the streets <laughs> that <laughs> kind of block him from doing it properly. Yeah, yeah. But uh, you know, even at the end, you know, basically, you know, you know, Hollow's decided at the end that you know she's. You know, Lawrence should go through with this deal, and you know he'll come out of this with what his dream is. He'll have, he'll, he'll actually have this in and money to, to basically turn it into a trading post for himself, right? Which is something he's talked about always wanting is a, a, a being able to to make a shop and settle down, right? And you know she and she and if she's you know if he stays with her, he'll he won't be able to do that. So she's decided basically at this point after this deal is done, I'll I'll go off on my own. You got me really close to home. I really appreciate that. And you know, our like I will always treasure this time we've had together. But you know, it's going to end at some point, no matter what. And we might as well end it now, when we got a chance for you to actually get exactly what you want. And I'm close to home. And Lawrence is like, I'm. Is that actually what I want? <laughs> it's sort of the thing that he sort of tried, started having to figure out. And when things start going south, he very quickly realizes, you, and he has this conversation with the person who is sort of the sort of quasi antagonist of this whole end up being the antagonist. He realizes that, yeah, like I do want to settle down and have my own place, but I also really want to spend as much time as possible with Hollow. Because I actually, oh dear God, I love her. Fuck, <laughs> son of a bitch. When did that happen? <laughs> Like he, it's 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 a, like he realizes he's always known that yeah I enjoy spending time with her she's attractive but I, you know that's it's it's like no I'm actually in love with her ah oh, crap well that's that that makes things clear well that 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 certain certainly clears things up ah uh, I'm such a fool where did Dad always say never short sell commodities and don't fall in love with elder gods <laughs> what did I do short sell commodities and fall in love with elder gods. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, Hollow basically after at the end, basically he you know bargains for her release from this thing that she's agreed to, and she's like, "The fuck are you doing? I told you." And he's like, "Yeah, I got screwed over, but I had exactly enough to get you out of this. But you could have used that to look, Hollow. I'm in love with you." <laughs> and she's like, "I, she... God damn it, God damn it. <laughs> You're serious? Yeah, and I want to spend as much time with you, and you know, and we can part on." happier terms like later we have you have time do you do you not enjoy traveling and doing merchant shit with me i mean if you don't then yeah fine but you know like i int- i want to get you back to your home and from we can figure out where where the, whether you'll split up there or you know on good terms there or if we want to keep traveling together but i didn't make anything out of this so so I gotta, I gotta go and do my thing anyway. <laughs> I'm not settling down here. Never mind the fact that I'm not settling down here. Have you seen the state of the town? <laughs> Everything is currently on fire, Lalo. We need to go. <laughs> also, the the bishop is an idiot. <laughs> yeah. See that guy with his shears go by? That looks like a bill hook. It used to be a pair of shears on a pole. It's a bill hook now. We're leaving. <laughs> <laughs> the church did something that pissed off everybody in town. Now they're rioting. Can we leave now? Yeah, the neighborhood's gone to shit. <laughs> <laughs> and that's basically, you know, it, them basically, like, hollow... I, I don't know that I, you can defi- say that Hollow... I mean... Hollow is very clearly very fond of Lawrence. I think she loves him as much as she's capable of. She's yeah, that's, still a god. Uh, the thing is, she's not human. Yeah. And that's something that actually comes across every now and then in very cool and subtle ways. Um, But it's very clear that she genuinely cares for Lawrence in her own, like, her own wolfy way. <laughs> I mean, she does say in no uncertain terms, you know, two or three times, like, it's like, no, I'm no problem, like, you know, she's no problem, like, potentially the, the thought of being in a relationship with a human. But, 
you know, even, you know, the physical aspects of it and having children, all that kind of thing. But, you know, both her and the children will more than likely outlive the human. Yep. Uh, it's like, it, it's like, it's like, have, you know, ki- it's like keeping a husband as a pet. Kind of. <laughs> you know, because, because well, I mean, it's, it, I, it, it is the classic sort of, uh, it's a classic fairy tale trope, honestly. Yeah. yeah. You know, the, the fae being falling in love with the, with the human. And, mm-hmm. you know, the fact that, he, you know, and it's worked its way into a lot of fantasy fiction over the years, you know, and it's most commonly seen, you know, in relationships between elves and humans is the classic one you see yeah. in a lot of fantasy. Yeah. Um. Look at you, Tolkien. Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> okay, the, the, the whole show just screams Neil Gaiman, though. Oh, yeah. It, yeah. No, no, I agree. I I agree completely. It, it, it's this like sort of like modern reinterpretation, modernized reinterpretation of a fairy tale of like a, a a fairy and a human falling in love with this whole thing involving exploring medieval economics and social structures. Yeah, and it's just yeah, it, it it's like you're reading like American Gods or like one of his short stories or Sandman or something. It's not quite as weird as American Gods. Okay, but nothing's as weird as American Gods. <laughs> Not much is. Made me good omens, but that's because Terry Pratchett was there, and they're both drunk. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah, I, it, it's very clear that the you could they could have kept doing more anime after this. Uh, again, like there are twenty-one volumes of the light novel. Yeah, there's a. <laughs> There's a there lot is of material more to, to go into there. Um, and but you know, at the same I, time, it was a decent enough stopping point. Exactly. That that that's sort of my take is, while I there are, in many ways I kind of I'm kind of tempted to track down the light novels because I kind of want to you know read more about you know, Lawrence and Hollow's you know <laughs> economic shenanigans as they travel across Europe. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, and you know they're 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 just hilariously adorable relationship. But you know, I the anime ended at a it, they chose a good point to end on if they want if they, you know. Yeah, yeah. I think I honestly, from my point of view, if they had another season of basically the same thing, which I mean you can see how it would go. The third season would be exactly the same, just now it's like the progression of their relationship and can it work? Yeah. Yeah, that, that's, but it'd be more or less plot-wise, it'd be more of the same. Yeah, and my we gut, my... here and well, depending on the time period, maybe the middle of the Thirty Years' War. <laughs> I have no idea, but my gut feeling, my gut feeling is that I, I don't know where they where where in the, the journeys they whether they get back to where Hollow's from in the light novels or not. I don't know. I've never bothered. Yeah. I haven't looked it up, and I kind of don't want to at this point, unless I actually decide to say, I want to sit down and read them. Right. Um. Uh, like I'm happy with the anime ending where it did, and like yeah, they and they continue traveling together, and they now know how each of them feel about each other. That's a good ending point. Yeah, yeah. Um, and this is the thing about anime: it's like anime, as long as they, uh, as long as you're satisfied with the ending that we got to. I mean, there's a lot of anime out there that you know there is so much more if you're willing to read. Yeah. You know, a lot, uh, there, there's, there's a lot of anime out there that just doesn't end. Uh, there's that as well, but there's quite a lot of anime that is essentially just almost a taster for what the full story is, mm. and you have to follow that in a different medium. Yep. Um, Looking at you, okay. one game no life. That is not okay for no game no life. <laughs> if they hadn't ended on a cliffhanger, Eric. Yes. No, because I want it animated by Madhouse because it was fucking gorgeous. <laughs> Not that I'm bitter. <sighs> but I mean, obviously, we haven't really looked into it of how many uh, how many volumes of the manga this covers um, up to season two. I mean, we know, like I said, we said at the start, you know, there's 16 volumes of the manga. There's 21 volumes of the light novel. So right, there's plenty of material out there if you do want to follow up with it, but they don't do it animated, unfortunately. But yeah, um... So yeah, that 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 spice and wolf. I mean, it's it's good. Yeah, I guess so. Into final thoughts. So uh, Eric, then Gav, then me. I'll take. I'll finish up as soon as my recommendation. Um, 
I really enjoyed it, honestly. It's um, I learned a lot about medieval economics, which was cool. Um, it, it honestly was cool. It made it entertaining to learn about this, like, what sounds like a really dry, uninteresting topic. <laughs> um, and the the manner of the the telling of the story, um, especially the uh, the relationship between Lawrence and Hollow, is both really natural and very at once feels very realistic and grounded and very fairy tale, mm-hmm. and that's a really tough line to walk, and they do it perfectly. Um, animation wise, it's it's good. It's fine for the time. It doesn't. It doesn't make your brain explode, um, although they do some great stuff with color choices and compositions, but like the actual like flow isn't anything to write home about. Um, not actively bad, just not mind-blowing. I would say the art um, direction is stronger than the animation. Yes, yes, thank you. Um, excellent art direction. Um, Hollow's adorable, Craft is a guy. I, I appreciate that Craft doesn't look like your average anime protagonist, like at all. I yeah. like that a lot. And yeah, I mean, it's a show that should be experienced. Just don't go in there expecting like, you know, lightning balls and mm. giant mecha and whatnot. It's not that kind of show. It's a it's a thinky feely show, not a punchy murder show. I mean, I like both. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I I would recommend this. I would definitely recommend this to anyone that enjoys thinky feely shows. I think that's probably the best way to sum it up, really. Um, I mean... I'm not to say that I don't enjoy shows you've got to think about, but maybe I it's just my you know disinterest in, in economics where I didn't... I wasn't really as invested in this. Um, I mean... The, the 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 problem for me, and it's always the problem, is that you've introduced me to an interesting concept. The fact that this is an it's an old god traveling around with a human, and in the second season they kind of forget about Hollow, you know about you know what she, what she is. She talks about it a lot, and occasionally the her, her ears pop up every now and again. But I don't think she actually transforms once in the second season. Yeah, uh, I don't think she does. No, nope. they do a tease where she's about to and. Uh, and there, he stops her. There are a couple um, times where she's like, oh, okay, so you want me to go murder the bitch? It's like, no! No, 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 no wait! Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, like I say, uh, the whole, um, I can't remember the word for it now. I'm, I'm, I've lost on the, I'm lost on the word for it. Economics, that's it. The whole thing about, <laughs> the whole thing about economics doesn't really, it's not my, you know, bag. Um, it is kind of the whole premise where I can see this is a good show. It mm. is a show that should be recommended. It is not a show that I particularly liked. Fair enough. No, no, that no, that's 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 harsh. I liked it, but I didn't particularly love it. That's fair. I, that's um, fair. Yeah, I totally get that. But obviously, I can see the this you know the actual how I can see the, how good it is. It's just not for me. That is totally fair. <laughs> I mean, not everything is for everybody. We, I remember how many times yes. we said that. Uh, like I said, I think it's purely just because, um, in in the majority of cases, you told me there's a god there. I want to see god stuff. <laughs> you god stuff. <laughs> no, don't buy tea bags. <laughs> tea bags haven't even invented yet. That's stupid. That's a crap investment. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, as you can probably tell, this show is almost entirely in my wheelhouse. Um, <laughs> yes, this is very much a Peter this, show. This is, yeah, this is custom made for Peter. <laughs> Pretty much. Um, like, if it had a bit more action to it, it like, you know, it literally would have been a completely new show. Um, I adore this show, honestly. Um, it is... I, I, it, the, I, it is, it is one of the best love stories I've seen in anime, uh, honestly. Hmm. Um, and it's one. And Eric's right. It's one of the most natural, sort of realistic, grounded feeling ones that still feels like a fairy tale. Which is, as Eric said, God, that's a hard tightrope to walk. Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Um. I love both the main characters to death. They're both great characters. Um. 
their di- their the dialogue is always just a lot of fun to listen to. Uh, Holy shit, their banter is great. It's fantastic. <laughs> yeah, that I did like the interplay between the two characters was good. I mean, that's and that's the that's sort of the meat of the show, really. Um, is their character interact? It's a character study. Yes. Is you know at at its heart, uh, with you know economic shenanigans, you know merchant shenanigans, and you know a love story between a, 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 a basically a fae being and a, and a human. Um, and um, God, it's it's not su- the air uh, sorry, the animation is not super, but oh my God, it's still pretty. Yeah. Just like the 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 detail they go into on the outfits and the the towns they're in and the landscapes, it just looks nice. Mm-hmm. Um, and the music is just so on point for the sh- for the for the for the 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 for what the the ambiance they're trying to get across in it virtually every, mm. in every scene. And oh god, the openings. Um, yeah, we, we should probably should have talked about how great the opening songs are. <laughs> yeah, the opening songs are both really good, and the visuals are just—they it just it just work. It just they do a really good job of sort of getting across, you know, sort of the that feel sort of dreamlike fairy tale quality. <laughs> yeah. Um, the first ending ending theme is hilariously weird. Uh, <laughs> yeah, a little bit, but it still works very well. Um. Oh, yeah, it sounds is... like a, a weird translation, a weird mistranslation of an old folks song. Yeah, yeah. And the second ending theme is kind of is fine. I just don't remember it very well. <laughs> yeah, it's not as memorable as the first one, which is oh god, you're never gonna forget that one. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I I would say I would recommend to anyone checking the show out. It might not be your cup of tea, but I think for most people. The sheer quality of the show will get around the bits that you're less fond of, that are mm. less your that are less your thing. Um, unless you absolutely like you, you're like the thought of anybody t- talking about merchant, you know, merchant deals at all makes you go, nope, I'm done, I'm leaving. Yeah. <laughs> or you know, you hate watching, you hate you hate reading or reading or watching or hearing about love stories. Um, <laughs> To be fair, those seem like things I shouldn't enjoy, but I really enjoyed this show. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Execution is often good, but like literally, yes. it, it has. It's, it's the point where I, my gut feeling is, if it's things you merely would you don't normally find interesting, that's different than, oh my god, I want to these these like a love story makes me want to set like buildings on fire. <laughs> yeah, I think that's I think I think that's my main fault. It's not that this was a bad show; it's just it didn't interest me. Mm-hmm. That. I I totally grok that. I understand. Oh god, yeah. There are plenty of good shows. There are plenty of shows that are qu- that are good quality that I'm like, yeah, no. Nah, I'm just not interested. I I that's me in, in One Piece. I One Piece I should love, but I don't. That's I fair. just don't care. <laughs> so that's Spice and Wolf. Uh, I guess sort of two and a half to two and a two thirds thumbs up, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't doubt the quality. It's just not a gap show, right? I mean, it's basically, you know, I think all of us agree that it's a good show and it's worth watching. It's just that it's not Gab's cup of tea. No, yeah, and that's fair. Uh, but two very enthusiastic thumbs up for me and Eric. Um, yes. <laughs> all right, so that's going to do it for this week. Eric, you're up next on the list on on the rotation. What is your choice for next time? Well, I figured we did a thinky feely show uh, and a relatively grounded fairy tale like one. Uh, I think we should probably do something a bit more bombastic with robots. So we're going to do uh, Code Geass. I do like robots. So we're doing season one of Code Geass? Yes. Okay. Because season two won't make any sense and you can't punch the screen hard enough if you don't know how the season one ends. <laughs> Well, yeah, my, Seriously. My, 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 my point is we're only going to cover one season this time, right? Is what I'm yes. asking. Okay. I'm okay with that. It's just I wanted to be sure. Maybe we'll come back and do season two so we can praise the ending and lament the beginning, but... <laughs> yeah! <laughs> but we're getting, we're, getting, we're getting robots, so, you know. We're getting mecha, we're getting crazy political stuff, we're getting a revolution. And crazy um, psychic powers. And crazy psychic powers. It's robots and psychic powers. Mr. Yep. Carlson, you do spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, art done by Cl- Studio Clamp, if I remember correctly. 
Yeah, I, I do believe. Yeah, I think everything's designed by Clamp. Yeah, it um, it it's it's very distinctively Clamp. I'm just gonna say this right now. Everyone's very skinny. Yes. <laughs> Can I be designed by Clamp? No. Oh. Uh, you have to be designed by Rob Liefeld. Dude, it! for you. Dude, dude, dude. Why that would you do that? Ex- <laughs> that does explain the pain in my ankles. <laughs> But Gav, you actually have feet. Uh, I guess I got the amazing experiment. Okay, Gav, how many pouches do you have on you usually? Um, oddly enough, my pajamas do have pockets. That's does it. Pockets are fine. But they're not pouches. They're different. <laughs> also, okay, okay. I was going to say because okay, I, I ha- never have less than six pockets on me. Pockets are fine. <laughs> also, do either of you carry around? <laughs> improbably large guns that don't actually don't look like they'd actually work. What day of the week is it? Well, it's currently Tuesday. Then yes. Well, you maybe you were designed by Rob Liefeld. <laughs> but I've seen well, you actually have feet, so, you know. Yeah, I have fairly large feet, actually. So maybe I'm Mike Minola? Uh, no. Well, maybe. No, no you... you no, maybe. Mike Minola is good. Have you seen my character design? <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's gonna do it for this week folks thank you so much for watching and we'll see you guys next time take care everybody have a great great rest of your week bye everybody bye bye <laughs>